Melon Hunter Groove. So this is based off of the amazing Herbie Hancock's Watermelon Man, his remake of Watermelon Man that he did with the Headhunters. Um, I put this together, I wanted to use the same basic ingredients, but come up with a different line. And some of those ingredients are 16th note, 8th note, syncopation, the use of tenths, so this interval, so the root and the third an octave up. So the third, in this case on G, would be B, but instead of using a third, which on the bass you're gonna get this really low, kind of muddy sound, this is, an in, this is a very effective sound on the bass and we've heard it used many times. And it's effective because the separation of the octave allows us to hear both pitches. So this is a major tenth, so a major third up, one octave up. So that was part of the sound and the rhythmic placement of those tenths was the key ingredient I extracted from the original line and put into this one. So the line, one, two, three, four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four. So I start right on beat one, dot, 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 and ah, uh, ah. Uh. So again, that's right on the downbeat, and then on the second beat, I'm playing on the upbeat, the and, and then beat three, I'm playing the, the second 16th note. So it's down, the middle, up, and then right after the beat, if you're thinking, dot, 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 one, e, and, two, e, and, a one, e, and, a two, e, and, a three, e, and, a four, e, and, a, and four, I'm back down on the beat, do. So, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So that's, that's kind of what makes that groove, like the original, so cool. It's kind of that the, the one is somewhat disguised, even though they're playing, they're giving you the one. The syncopation of the 16th note lines using the tenths was kind of the cool part of that. The other interesting thing is this is an odd number of bars like with the original Headhunters groove, um, it actually, there's the blues form, and then there's this little bridge that they add in, which on the original recording is not the same length each time. Like the first time it's introduced, it's shorter, and then later they go and they jam longer on that chord. So that's what I built into this groove. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then a four bar groove, so 18 bars is what this one is. And the, the harmony is like with most of our blues. The one chord, so I'm thinking of an A7 to the four, the D7, back to the one, and then the turnaround is over the five. It's really a, like a giant five. You could think five, four, five, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, the, the bridge section. Two. Over C, could be thinking C7, C sus. So that was some of the elements of the harmony to take a look at. So now let's take a look at the bass line bar by bar and see what I did in each, each example. So bar one is what I was explaining before about the placement of the 16th notes. I, I went from on the beat to the and to the second 16th note, also the E. One E, or actually three. One and E. That's the kind of the cool part. That's the crux of the groove. One and ah, 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 E, ah, 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 E, ah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five
That's the second bar. Let's take a look at the second bar. I'm using the same figure of the root and then using the flat seven as an ornament. So one E, one E and two. That's that's the that's the thing, right? One E and two E and a three E and a second bar. I do the same, but now I do a hammer on. Bow, down, oh. So I do a hammer on from the sharp nine to the major third down a tritone to the flat seven. So do 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 do. So I don't I don't pick each note. Hammer on. And then because I'm I've come down to the G, I'm actually placing the G rhythmically in the exact same spot that I played it with the tenth before. So and two E. Do 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 down So the second half of the of the second measure is the same as the first. So here's the first one again. One E and two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and two a two E. Repeat. Repeat. Up a fourth. So this is the same, <clears throat> the same exact melodic material transposed up a fourth. Um, <clears throat> I could play the the initial part of the line in two different spots. In in the performance on recording, I, I chose to play the initial four chord here, like, and then moved here for the tenths. But I could also just do the whole thing on the E string. And the other thing is, I'm using the last 16th note. So if I'm playing beat, uh, down on beat four, four and uh, da da da, as a way to anticipate the the downbeat. So three, three e and a four e and a one. Uh, uh. So that's the other part that I'm doing. So we went up the fourth. We did the same line. Back down to the one. Same line. So here's my five chord. And I'm using a, a slide or a glissando. I'm hitting the five or the E in this case. I'm using the E string because I'm going to be using tenths now. And so now I've landed on the, the four. So I do, I play the five and then I'm using a, se a series of chromatically descending major tenths. F major to E major to E flat major to land on D, which is my fourth four chord. One, two, E, uh, uh, two, two, uh, uh. I reference my my line. Um, so let's take let's take a look at where these fall rhythmically. We have one E and a two E and a three. <laughs> it's fun to play it and speak it at the same time. One E and a two E and a three E and a. So one E and a two E up. So I was talking about partials before in another video about um, the partials of the triplet being three. Since this is 16th notes, that means we have four partials of the 16th. So we've got one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and so in other words, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. So I'm playing a quarter note, one with the slide, one E and a two E and a. So I'm playing the second and the fourth partial of the 16th note, one E and a two E and a three E and a four. Woo! One E and a two E and a two E and a. And then I'm playing the second and the fourth of the four. So beat three is rested. One and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Now here, I could do a slide with my tenth. I could also just let it rest. Um, and I'm going to come back in on beat two with... Now 
I'm shooting, this is like the one spot in my line where I can, I'll improvise a little bit and decide whether I want to play exactly what I played or if I could embellish a little bit. One and a two and a three and two. Because I know I'm going for one. I know I'm shooting for the downbeat of one. I have to land the E right on the downbeat. But how I get to it is where I can have some variations. So here's the change of my groove. Now I'm going into... I'm chromatically leading down to the C, which is leaving the harmony and the, the traditional blues form. So, do 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 one and a two and three and four e and a one and a two do 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 I'm really just grooving on C and playing um, eighth note lines with sixteenth note embellishments and using the flat seven of that C seven chord. So. Um, one, two, three, and four, and a one, and a two, and three, and four, and a one, and a two, and three, and four, and one. So let's take a look at something I'm doing here. I could just, this is what happens if I hold the note down while I'm doing those, playing those eighth notes. You have a legato sound, which, uh, you know, it's somewhat... That's fine, but if I mute the note, this is what I'm trying to get at, if I mute the note, I can give it more of a percussive effect. And I'm doing this by releasing my left hand. I don't take my hand away from the string, it's sitting on the string. So the minute I release pressure from the string, the string lifts up and my fingers are here to mute the note. So, attack, release, attack, release, mm, 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 mm. And so that's, that's part of it. That's part of the, um, the technique. I'm, I'm using short notes by muting and then differentiating with long notes by leaving the, the string depressed, so. Now the last bar of this bass line, I'm playing all offbeat 16th notes. So I would start on, on, on beat three. I'm going to go three E and up, four E and up to the one. I'm, again, I'm, I'm leaping here to my flat seven. That's going to lead me to my one. Do, 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 da, 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 da. Okay, there you have it.